Hi all, Chris Willemo here for Stoke City TV and I have the pleasure of having Adi Akinbayi, Stoke City legend, with me. So Adi, talk to me. How did the Stoke move come about? Um, obviously when I was with um, Tony at Gillingham, um, I knew him quite well. And then obviously when I was at Crystal Palace, I wasn't really getting a game there because I came back from injury. And then Tony came in, came in for me on loan and then it was, that's how I came to Stoke from there. I've um, done well there and then eventually signed me. Your, your biggest contribution was that, that goal against Reading that, that kept Stoke in the league, you know. Uh, so what, what was your feeling? What do you remember about that game? To be fair, when I scored, I didn't sink in that we, it's one of them goals that will keep us up. Well, obviously, I know there was other results going on, which helped us as well. But at the time, when I'd done it, I didn't know until afterwards. And then everyone was going out and it's the crowd. And it's only just sunk in the next day that we, that goal would have been vital, well, it was vitally important for the team. Well, it's one of the things I've touched on many times before. It's like we're in a mindset, we're focused on the game in hand and we don't really realise how big certain moments in games are. Obviously, after that, you see how massive it was for, for the club, the city, the community. Yeah. How then easy was it for you to make that permanent switch? Because you were only here on well, loan. Well, as I said, it was because of Tony and uh, he, he, he knew what he can get out of me. And obviously, I knew I can get on well with him. I got on well with the, with the players. I settled them really well. Um, the club was a, 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 obviously I found that it was a huge club, um, huge support and it was something that I wanted to do, it was a new challenge for me so as I said it's, a, it's something that I wanted to do and obviously I moved on from Crystal Palace to here and I'm, I, I was really enjoying it at the time. You spent a year and a half here, how would you assess your time at Stoke? Brilliant, yeah, I loved every minute of it, I mean um, the, the, the team banter, everything that we've done here, I mean to tell you the truth, a lot of people didn't like the, the way we played football, but at the time I didn't really mind. It suited me. It suited where I wanted to play, run about, getting behind. Obviously, people said that they wanted to, us to do more, a, bit, a bit more passing, but that's people. You're always going to have an opinion on, on, on football, and that's football for you. But it suited me really well, and I settled on really well. For you, what would you say your, 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 your most memorable game is and goal at your time at Stoke? Now that's a hard one because you scored a few important ones. Yeah, it's very hard, um, obviously. Um, going back to that Reading game, I did, as I said, I didn't realise until afterwards how big and huge it was for the team. I mean, I, st I still get a lot of people um, talking about that now. And obviously that, that Reading one must be in the highlight. But saying that, playing football, for me in general, as um, you, you're getting paid to do something that you loved, that's the highlight of the... The, the whole football for me in general. I mean, you can't beat it. I mean, when, now you finish, you just look back on it thinking how quickly it goes. So, probably the Reading game, but generally it's just playing football and then getting paid for something that you love. So, that moves on to the next one. Talk us through your decision to make the move to Burnley. Uh, was it a tough one to make? Yes, uh, it was a very tough one. Um, at the time, I think where the club was sitting in, uh, I think we were sitting top in the league and then. <laughs> Going back to, I went in to see Roger about um, the progress of what the club is going to do, how we're going to go forward. I think at the time the Icelandics were there, um, were in charge of the club, and there was a bit of um, an argument between us, me personally, and the uh, Icelandic because it seems like they didn't want to do nothing at the time. And us, <laughs> and I think everybody heard of it. I sat with Roger in a room all night, wanting to get an answer to what's going to happen. Obviously, my contract came into it afterwards, but then. I think the Icelandic didn't want to push forward and from there I just made my mind up that obviously they didn't want to do nothing so I've got to push on but at the time I did really want to push on with the club. You chose in 2009 to move to Houston Dynamo, so how did that move come about? It was a tough decision, um, it's something that I always wanted to do, I was always going to go somewhere, I just wanted to go somewhere abroad, probably Australia, and, but the American thing came about because of John Spencer obviously, he, he knew I was from before and obviously we sent our videos there. They looked at and, and obviously they wanted me over there, but I found it really tough over there, to be honest, because of the, the heat. I couldn't right. get used to it. Yeah, it was really hot. I mean, sometimes we were training like eight o'clock in the morning because of the heat. But um, obviously the man just said he was going to keep bringing me on slowly so I could get used to the heat. But obviously it didn't work out right for me, so I ended up moving back. But yeah, it was a very tough decision because I moved the whole family. So it wasn't what you expected then? You when obviously you make that transition, you know you have a kind of ideal of what it's going to be like, and it did it not meet up to expectation, or you just found it hard because of the climate and no, I think it was the climate. Yeah, I found it really tough. I mean, within 15 minutes, I was sweating like crazy, but obviously I couldn't get used to it. I mean, some, there was a few players there that were they were just like training for an hour without sweating, which is unbelievable. I couldn't, 
I couldn't get over it. But it, it was going to take me time to get used to it. But obviously, the manager wanted to move on to better, bigger things. So obviously, we just called it a day from there. So Adi, you obviously played in close quarters to Jeff Cameron uh, with Houston. Uh, what was it like during? What was he like during your time there? Could you see the potential? In, yeah, in I saw a massive potential in him. Obviously, he was playing. He enjoyed playing centre midfield as well as centre back, and he played right back as well. To be fair, he could play most positions. The guy was very athletic, good with the ball, and obviously, at the time he was young. Obviously, he wasn't getting in the team as much, uh, but obviously, gradually, slowly, was coming into. It. But I knew he had uh, a massive potential because. There was one time when we was there and he said, could, could I get him to England? So I said I can speak to a few people that can put you to England. But obviously his agent's done a great job for him and he's, he's come in. Obviously he's fitted and it took, him a t it took him time to fit in slowly. But then he's really doing well, to be honest. And I won't be surprised if a lot of people at different clubs will be um, keeping an eye on him, to be honest. See, I've always, I've always kind of told my players to nail down a position because I think it goes against the player. But for me... Should he not just say, you know what, I'm a holding midfielder? I know he's versatile, he can play in all positions, but as a manager, I feel when you look at a player and he can play in all these positions, I think it's more positive if he just nails down because in all these positions, he's performed well, but he's got to actually step up and say, you know what, I'm a holding midfielder. I'll do a job for you, but that's my position. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, since Jeff has been here, I think, uh, touching on what you said, he's got to um, hold down his position. I think he has been trying to do that. When Tony was here, He's always said, Eddie, I want to play midfield, I want to play midfield, because he knows he's got, the good, he's got good engine to get up and down, he's good on the ball. And obviously, I don't know, what is, I don't know how he is uh, with Mark Hughes at the minute, whether he has told Mark Hughes that he wants to play holding midfield role, but that, that's totally up to him. As you said, he's an adult now, so, so he's got to speak up and tell the manager where he wants to nail down and play. You returned to England, uh, you played for a couple of clubs before choosing to retire. So. What, what have you done since hanging up your boots? I'm a bit of a consultant now and then I'm obviously working with Frank Sinclair at uh, the non-league club, Conference North Club, um, Cohen Bay. I'm enjoying it, obviously, it's just something different. Obviously, it's not, the, it's not what we used to do. Like, your kit has been there, everything is there for you. It's, it's totally different. It's man-managed, to be honest. Um, and we're having, sometimes we're having to travel with the team with the, with, with our, on our team bus with the fans. So it's totally different, but it's good for me. It's, good, it's a good learning curve for me. Um, Something that I, I really wanted to get into a little bit, but it's, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it to be honest. I was just trying to imagine myself playing for you and Frankie and having a bad performance and having to come in at half time. I tell you what, I don't think I'd enjoy, enjoy that. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, I did do, I did go crazy once because the only time when I go crazy is when people are not putting in the hard work. But I did go crazy once. But apart from that. I think I've got to learn to calm my temper now. Yeah. <laughs> so is, is management, so obviously you're a coach now, is management something that you, you've ever thought about? To be honest, if I'm going to tell you the truth, no. I don't really want to go into management. Um, I don't think it's for me, personally. The coaching side, maybe. Um, scouting side, driving about, looking at kids, because I'm more into like kids coming up now. Um, that's the, one of the fo things I want to focus on, and kids with education and all that. That's mainly me, but manager-wise, no. no I, I know you've taking in a couple of games like myself and uh, they're just playing some amazing stuff. They're looking organised, expansive, fluent football, you know, and it's, uh, it's like going away from the, the stoke of old, yeah. direct football. They've got that balance. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts about the Stoke City start to the season? I think it's been good, to be honest. Uh, as I said, Mark Hughes has come in, um, obviously, started off slow, but now he's steady the ship now. He's getting in his players, how he wants to do everything, how he wants to do it. Obviously, I know Mark Bowen as well, obviously, from when we played at Norwich, and I know his, um, how his coaching method is, is like. Obviously, that, as I said, it's, it takes time to, 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 to get your team together, to get your players that you want and you want to play how you want. But as I said now, they're playing really, they're playing good football now and they're settling well now. And obviously, as I said, Stoke are going to be there and then they're back again. They'll probably do better than they did last year. No, Adi, it's been amazing to have you here this morning. I just want to thank you for your time, mate. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Brilliant. Brilliant. Top man.